Now that the patient has changed posture, we want to start at the top of the body and work our way down, deciding whether or not every part of the body has been examined appropriately. I actually divide the body into the head, the neck, the chest, the abdomen, the genitalia, the legs, and then the neurological and musculoskeletal examinations. So let's start at the top, and have we forgotten to do any part of the examination of the head? And we actually have completed all of it. As we move down to the examination of the neck, there are two very important parts of the exam which we have not yet done. One is evaluation of the carotid. And before one palpates the carotid, it is absolutely mandatory that you auscultate the carotid first to make sure that there are no carotid breweries present. One just takes the diaphragm of the stethoscope and places it over the carotid and evaluates whether or not breweries are present. If no breweries are present, you can then palpate the carotid. The carotid artery is best palpated by placing your hand on the trachea and sliding it between the trachea and the sternocleidomastoid, as I'm demonstrating now, and going straight back in this position, making sure that you palpate only one carotid at a time. After you've done that, you can palpate the other carotid, as I'm demonstrating now. One then wants to evaluate neck veins. And an observation that should have been made when the patient was sitting up was whether or not the neck veins were distended to the angle of the jaw. Clearly, neck veins have, as a manometer, are an indirect manometer of left ventricular end diastolic pressure and a direct manometer of right ventricular end diastolic pressure. So if the neck veins are very distended sitting up, one can be pretty much assured that one is dealing with a patient who has left ventricular end diastolic pressure elevation. One also wants to evaluate the waveforms, the A, C, and V waveforms of the jugular pulse. And one looks at the jugular pulse in a way which is very easy to enlarge and exaggerate the pulse motion, is to take a pen light and to place your hand on the sternum and to shine a light tangentially to the jugular pulse. And you are then looking for ACV waves. You'll remember that the A wave is related to atrial contraction. The X descent is the relaxation of the atria. The C wave is closure of the tricuspid valve. The X prime descent, which is descent to the base of the heart. And the V wave is atrial filling which culminates with the wide descent, which is when the tricuspid valve opens. Any abnormality of the valves or compliance of the valves or of the ventricle will give you an abnormality of these particular waveforms. So they're really very important to evaluate, and they're done in this manner.